Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear brother. The message that he sent to me reads like this. Hello brother Nanshi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? I have spent more than two decades of my life behind bars for a crime which I did not even commit. So at that time I was only... 23 years old when they took me away and they stole my life and I do not blame the people in my community because everyone honestly thought that I was the one who had done it because of the way that I used to live my life. I was someone who was always hanging around a lot of prostitutes. So these prostitutes, what we will do is that when they have their clients, then I will act as if I was the bodyguard. And if we had the opportunity to steal from the client that would have booked that prostitute, then I would also work as a thug. And I was a different man when I came out of prison and I have been out for a while now, but I cannot escape the shadows of the past. It seems as if the world has already moved on without me and it seems as if i am still stuck in the year 1995 and whenever i try to make sense my life truly does not make sense of how my life was stolen from me so on that night what happened was that i had spoken with this other girl who was a prostitute she told me that she had this other client but she did not understand that client. She suspected that maybe the client wanted to use her for some rituals or whatever. So she wanted me to accompany her. So we went together and when we were busy drinking, obviously she did not make it look like we knew each other. I was seated at another table and she was seated at another table with her rich blesser. And as time went on, that was when I saw this other prostitute who was with this other guy and we had a big fight. So after we had a big fight and then I just went outside and I returned back home. Little did I know that the guy after that, he then caused more pro trouble. And when he came out of that beer hole, that was when he met another guy who stabbed him and he passed away. He was robbed. His wallet, his cash was stolen. So on my way walking home, minding my own business, that was when a police car pulled up beside me. They asked me a few questions, nothing unusual, like where I had been, what I was doing out so late, if I had fought with anyone because I had blood on my shirt what i was doing out so late i answered them honestly because i just thought that this was the police doing their police business little did i know that there were some fake witness who had already suggested that i was the main suspect since i had been seen fighting with that guy but then they asked me to come down to the station they needed to clear up a few things with me this is what they said i then went with them not thinking much of it and i was not even worried because even though i had done some criminal stuff before but on that night i had nothing i thought to hide but what i didn't know was that my life was about to be turned upside down when we were at the station that was when i saw that I was going to be interrogated. I got interrogated for nearly 10 hours. That was the reason as to why they had to let me go. But after so many years, because of the way that I was interrogated, I just want your listeners to always pray for those that are in prison. Yes, you might be walking free today, but you never know. Maybe one day you'll end up being in prison because when I was in prison, that was when I met a lot of people that claimed to be innocent just like i was men that went to prison for the crimes that they did not even commit i was then taken to this other room so in that room where i was taken into it had a concrete ceiling so they used a pulley to bring down that big concrete ceiling it was not a very big room each and every time when they would interrogate me, then that ceiling will be brought down lower and lower such that there won't be any space for you to stand or to sit. Then they will leave you in that situation. And at the end of the day, even if you did not commit any crime, you just needed to confess because what they will do is that 
they would be beating me up. There were two guys that were in the CID department that were interrogating me. They will beat me up. And the moment that I will feel that I am about to die and just, just asking God saying, please God, let me just die because my soul is suffering. My flesh is suffering. Please give me rest. When they would see that I am about to die, what they will do is that they will take a bucket full of cold water then they would pour that cold water on my body, shocking me back again to life. Then the interrogation will start all over again. Then they will say that there were some witnesses that had seen that I had killed someone and the description, it matched the one that they were given. I was the one. I was confused because I did not do anything. They beat me up until there was blood everywhere. One of the guys who was the sea. One of the guys who was also torturing me, he was wearing a long sleeved shirt. He had to fold it up because he kept on beating me until there was blood all over his hands. I did not even understand until I just admitted to a crime that I did not even commit. When I was taken for my trial, I can safely say that my trial, it was just a joke. Even the lawyer that was given to me, my public lawyer, he did not even put up a fight. The prosecutor really had a nice day with me and he painted me as if I was a violent criminal. This is my question to the judge who was looking at my case like wherever he is right now. Is he happy sending someone that was innocent to jail? Is he happy? But I promise you that the day that I am going to die, that is the day that there will be a, an avenging spirit that will come to visit his family. His daughters, they will never get married. Those that would have gotten married, they will return back from their marriages. Their husbands will kick them out. As for the boys that will be born into the family, None of them will ever achieve anything in this life. And as for the girls, all those that will be born into his family, they will become my wives because this is what their father, their grandfather did to me, sending an innocent man to prison for a crime that he did not commit. Brother Nashi, I was someone who was labeled as someone who was capable of murder. They brought out those witnesses, but those guys that they had brought out, they were the same guys that had a grudge with me. Some things in prison that I can never forget, the violence, even though I knew that I was innocent, I kept on clinging to the word of God, not even when it seemed like no one believed me. Years went by my family, even though they used to visit me, but then they started to drift away. Friends disappeared. I was forgotten, but I never stopped fighting. And I told myself that one day God was going to help me out. I filed an appeal after appeal, wrote letters to anyone who would listen, trying to get someone to look at my case. And it was very fortunate that the guy who had murdered this man, whom people were saying that I had killed, he was arrested. The same murder weapon that he had used on that night. So he had gone around robbing people. So he was in prison at that time. That was when this weapon was linked back to him. Then in 2017, everything changed. There was this other lawyer from an innocent project. She was the one who took my interest in my case. And then she found out that I had been tortured for more than 10 hours. When I am saying that I was tortured for 10 hours, it was like 10 hours nonstop of being beaten up so that I can just... Uh, agree that I was the one who had committed this murder. So that is how I was finally released because they said that now can you torture someone nonstop for 10 hours so that they can just admit that they committed this crime. If you were not beating him up, then we could say, but because you were beating him up, then this meant that I had to be released from jail. After 22 years, they finally released and they realized that they had the wrong man. When they told me that I was going to be released, I don't know how I can explain the feeling that I had. I had been dreaming about that day for a very long time. I walked out of prison and the world had moved on and had left me behind. And when I looked at my life, my life was a stolen life. And now I am trying to start afresh again in a foreign land in South Africa. 
Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our uh, dear brother. Strange things indeed they do happen in this world. Just imagine being in prison for 20, what, 22 years, I think, for a crime that you did not even commit. Yeah. <laughs> 